That's a different hustle. It's, it's okay. a, I, think, I think it's a little smarter because of the time that we're living in. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit smarter. Yeah, uh, it's nonprofit this time. He he's really using. Now this is the truth. He's okay. using the church preacher bishop thing to really cloak everything else that he has. These three and four businesses that you can all look up that he got about four hundred thousand dollars of PPP loans for all of the businesses. You know, during the COVID, you know, you can research and find out who he is and what's in his name and what is not in his name. So I think this is a little, little bit smarter and him using the church and religion and being a pastor and a bishop to trick people. The reason why one of these women, he got that $90,000 from because she was sitting in the church as a member. So it's her pastor she's doing business with, you know, so of course she's going to totally trust you. You're using your power to rip people off to this day. You ain't gave the woman her money back. You know, so it's just unfortunate. He's definitely using, he come, went, got right out of prison and then started that nonprofit in like a year and a half after he got out of prison. He came out a bishop. <laughs> got made a bishop in jail. Now, Larry. Let me add, let me let me get into this real quick because I told you I was gonna play devil's advocate and I know you don't oh, like no. devils too much. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You cast them away. So okay. before you throw your holy oil on me, give me a second. Let let me just don't say my name and I won't disappear first. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, now when I saw the live, I was disturbed by the live for for one reason only. Okay. Miss mm -hmm. um, Genesis. Oh, Warren, it, Ms. Genesis Warren. I said her uh -huh. name right. Okay. Yep. Um, yes, she did kind of, you know, make me kind of raise my eyebrow a little bit. Like, you know who I am and you know this and you're you're saying you don't know who I am. You're lying. And I'm like, he could have, he couldn't have really, maybe he didn't know who she was. So I didn't get really get the point of that. But mm -hmm. what disturbed me was it was two black men, two black men mm -hmm. on a platform and I felt as if it was being allowed uh, for him to disrespect her in mm -hmm. terms of calling her out of her name mm -hmm. and, and referring to her as Biggie Smalls mm -hmm. or that, you know, uh, uh, making assumptions that she needed to lose weight and your head was down like this. Mm -hmm. And I was like... Why, why, why was your head down during that moment? And I felt like the only person that really could have addressed him in that moment was you. I stay in my head whenever I'm in exchanges like that. So I was thinking about, okay, Larry, how are you going to handle this? So you jump in here and really get him, like I do on my platform whenever people are coming against Black women and the LBGTQAI plus community. But what was happening was we were getting a good picture of who this guy was. Now, mind you, I've talked to his first wife. I've talked to the victims. And he has been excellent at being able to get and wiggle beside people like Eric Adams in New York and other high powerful people and connect himself saying that 50 Cent got saved up under his ministry. But that's really funny because yesterday 50 Cent put up a spoof video about him. So I decided in that moment, I know Genesis, I know she can handle this. I've been in this situation with her before, somebody coming after her as a direct result of what they have, what has been said or shared on my platform, and I let it take place. And then I got in the situation, got in the conversation, and really at that point, I was really trying to get him to expose himself even the more. So that's the reason why I didn't jump in there. Mm. Okay. Okay. Cause to me, I was just like, dang, like she's a woman. She's obviously trying to get her point across. And I know a lot of times we as women, like, you know, you wouldn't even have to jump in and hold me. You know, I got it. You know no. what I'm saying? No. I, my husband sucks his side. I, I got this. You feel me? I have seen you do that. You don't need nobody's help. Uh -oh. <laughs> on the floor because here you are this he always both been from the street he always both been extremely straight and can't stand the f word people in the lbgtqi this is something that i experienced with him prior to this so i already knew and to see him quickly they come in and he just get down on the floor and then the guy is taking something around you from around your neck that would have been that would have went totally different
I mean, just out of my, just my reflex would have been totally different. But hey, it is what it is. Um, I just think that he has a whole lot of smoke when it comes and a whole lot of talk when it comes to females. But then when it comes to males, he always tried to get close to them and get their approval, get recognition, get a piece of their power and whatever he can get from them. So he moves a certain kind of way. Because when I went back and looked at the live, he really, he really didn't have it for me. He went at her more than mm-hmm. he did. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. So um, I did see him turn around and, and, and load in on you. And where did he get it from that you claimed that you were part of the LGBTQ community? He said that you had admitted that you were homosexual. No, he said that I admitted that I had nuts in my mouth. I said it on oh, my Oh, I remember that. Okay. Okay. I said I said it on my platform and I'm not shame about it. Um You said it on my platform. You you I told said, you talked about your molestation. Gosh, I've been saying this for years, you know. So I even said it to him in his face when he was talking about the LB. I'm I don't hide anything. Most men that have had the trauma I've had or the consensual sex or sex, same sex activities with another man are not going to tell you. We, we used to most men, most men not saying that, but women will tell it. Right. But I'm the kind of nigga that, say, that will say, and I said this on my platform. And I remember the, the show I was doing it on, cause I was talking about someone that was saying that I was trying to, I was thinking less of them because they was gay. I said, no, how am I going to do that with you? I said, I've had dicks in my mouth and balls in my mouth too. So when I said that, people like him, like, oh, oh my God, especially the more the platform grows, people don't know me, you know? So as they look more and continue to watch, they learn more and more about me. My day ones, they know about me. And so it was, I didn't see it as a low blow. It was funny to me. And, but I love that he used the F word because everybody was able to see. And not only is he... Um, a scam and that he is a clout chaser, but he is also antiquated. He's using words that those of us in the public, in the public eye that got money and doing millions a year, we know we can't come at women and the LBGTQ community because those are the people that watch us and pay us. He said, you you don't even have a clue (laughs) of how business and all of this works. You know, so I'm glad that he did that. And then to call me ugly, that did not matter. I don't mind getting called ugly by somebody that looked like Flavor Flav. I mean, so go do you. Hi, you guys. So I see Tasha K is interviewing Larry Reed. And of course, Larry Reed is giving this full breakdown of Bishop Whitehead. Um, now, when I went over to his channel, he just has a regular sermon up. And he might want to continue to do that online until he can get security at his church. Um, So, yeah, I'm curious to see what he's going to do on Sunday with that. Right. What do you guys think? Don't you think he should have security before he try to hold service there again? Um, Now, Tasha was asking Larry about why there was no protection put around the woman um, that he was live with. And they were sitting there kikiing about this guy um and i'm surprised to hear i think her name is geneva or janice or something she's supposed to be a a minister as well right and so larry as you can hear is explaining why he didn't feel like he had to go to bat for the lady um here's my thing about this whole the whole larry connection with this it's like this went from because this like we all know this was in mainstream media about this guy getting his church getting robbed and somehow this became about larry reed right (laughs) do you guys feel like that let me know in the comments somehow this became about larry reed and um i don't know maybe mr whitehead was trying to reach a certain demographic certain crowd and and you know they both have admitted that they admitted that they um, met each other at an event. Um, and so it's clear that they have some type of knowledge of each other. They're saying that they don't have a relationship with each other, but they are aware of each other. They're aware of the type of car that they each other drive and, you know, um, 
questioning each other's sexuality. <laughs> you know, it's just very personal stuff, right? If you guys get where I'm going with this. So it's possible that all of this inner workings between the both of them to sort of put these stories out there. This is just what I think. This is not my mind, I think. Because um, if he didn't really care for Larry, why go live with him? I understand he heard them laughing or kicking about the robbery or whatever, or you know how much his jury was worth and why would he have his jury on and all this stuff that Larry was saying. Um, like I said, I agree with the the bishop about that much. Like. For her to be a pastor, Larry is claiming that he's ordained as something as well. <laughs> and for him to have, it's supposed to be the church media or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, a, it's very messy. It's very messy. Right? And I feel like if people are out here saying we were supposed to look past Kim Burrell, then why can't we look past the fact that this guy is a hood, if you will, street minister, preacher, bishop, whatever it is he's calling himself. Um, and if he wants to have a storefront church, maybe he only needs a storefront church. Maybe he don't have enough members to have anything other than a storefront church anyway. So, and then of course, a lot of people are online. We are coming out of a COVID. Um, so I don't, I think it was just over. It's over. It's just a lot. It's a lot to me that they're playing into this. I understand Larry needs clicks and views over at the Larry Reed show on his channel with it to make it work for him to keep making videos about it. Um, Cause I think he spoke with the Wiley show as well. And I'm not sure if that was on his platform or on Wiley's platform, but you know, I'm, I'm just like, how did this become about Larry Reed? right? <laughs> you guys get where I, what I'm saying. And this one thing, if you're trying to put it out there, you're trying to let everybody know that, that you don't think that he should be trusted. But I don't think a lot of these people should be trusted. Right? You guys let me know what you think about what I'm saying in the comments. I don't think a lot of these people should be trusted. I think church is just not what it used to be. Right? It's, it's not. Um, and I've already talked about this in the Kim Burrell video, so I'm not going to talk about it again. But let me know what you guys think. Um, and I think Tasha was trying to hint at, is there something more going on between Larry and Mr. Whitehead? Because like I said, even for me, and maybe Tasha was thinking the same thing, or maybe somebody else said that to her. I don't know, but it definitely came off very personal, like this going back and forth between Larry and the bishop. Um, it seems personal, um, and then them letting each other, letting the, the viewing public know on both sides that they know each other, they know things about the other, and it's a little much. It's a little much. I don't know what to make of it. Let me know what you guys think. Now, just because the man was over there using slurs do not mean anything, and we should learn that from the Jesse Lee Peterson story, right? <laughs> Just because he's using certain words do not mean that he feels a certain way about the LGBT community, and it's possible he could be LGBT himself. This is all allegedly. I don't know. I'm just saying. You never know. Um, you never know. So I don't know. Um, but Larry was like, see, I told y'all he felt a certain way about certain people. Um, but if you knew that, then you know that. And announcing that to the rest of the world is doing what? You, you guys get what I'm saying? It's not changing anything because people who are feeling the need to follow him are going to follow him anyway. Um, and people who feel the need to, to follow Larry is going to follow Larry anyway, right? Larry has a sizable platform and people seem to think that it's okay to mix mess with the church, right? To, miss met, to mix mess with God. So what's the difference? Somebody bringing in their hood mentality to God and pairing it together. What's the difference? Let me know in the comments if you guys get what I'm saying with this or where I'm trying to go with this. Because I don't know if it's making sense or not. But I'm just saying, I mean, to me, it's all... Um, scammy is all not of God 
you know, and the fact that she was Kikin and he was Kikin and, you know, all of them talking about they are ordained and, you know, they're, they're doing God's work. Um, when? When are y'all doing that? <laughs> Let us know about that. When y'all doing the, the Lord's work? <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying? Like, it just, I'm sitting here like, huh? But it's neither here nor there because I think the church, it, it just hasn't been what it's supposed to be for a very long time. But let me know what you guys think about the interview between Tasha and Larry Reed. You probably have to go to her website to see the full interview. But she has about 20 minutes, somewhere in there, 20, 25 minutes up on her YouTube page. Um, and yeah, she kind of asked him what his relationship, what is, what is the relationship between them since they were getting so personal in their exchange during that live. And I didn't play all of it, like when he was using the racial slurs and the... Um, the, the gay slurs and all that. I didn't play all of that. Um, but yeah, he was the minister, the bishop. He was saying all kind of stuff. But then so were they. I don't find any of their behavior to be of God, if you really want to know the truth. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next video.